Yo, what's good? Randall here. We're on our way to Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. We're gonna check out some rides, gonna eat some food, um, and have the poop scared out of us, which I'm not excited for at all. <laughs> but I'm ready, let's go. Okay, so I have a friend who would always talk about the story of when growing up, he would always have this prominent question in his head. He would always ask himself this question whenever a beautiful girl would walk by, it would be this, how can I get with her? This would be a pattern for him for years and years and years until one day he was sitting at mass and a beautiful girl walks by and completely enamors him. He describes it as like the most beautiful girl he's ever seen, even beyond celebrities. And he thinks to himself this question, who is she? So this might sound like a completely ordinary question to most of us, but in reality, it's a really beautiful one. Because through his attractions and through his sexuality, he was able to, for once, see this woman for who she was, rather than what he could get from her on a physical or emotional level. He had encountered something that we call chastity. And I think when it comes to our sexuality, we have two extremes. On one extreme, we have this prudish approach where a lot of us think that it's dirty, it's, it's weird, it's gross, it shouldn't be something to be talked about, so we deny it, we ignore it, and we repress it. And in response, we have this swing of the pendulum to this other extreme where anything goes, anything is permissible, and anything is okay. So I think with most people, when they think of the word chastity, they think of something that's repressive, and they think of something that's meant to be denying my sexuality in some way, shape, or form, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Oh, true. Yo, I'm getting hungry. Am I always hungry? I'm always hungry. Turkey leg? It's me. <laughs> Chastity means integrating my sexuality and my attractions based on my state in life. Whether I'm single, whether I'm dating, whether I'm engaged, whether I'm married, a religious sister or a brother or a priest, whatever it is, it means integrating it in that unique context. But it also means that we have to uphold the dignity of the other person using our desires. It has nothing to do with shoving them down. Chastity is not about repression, it is about freedom. Having the ability to choose the good and to choose love with ease and with joy because that's what we're meant for. So yes, this means that we have to set parameters, the no's have to be said, and boundaries have to be set, but this is for our greatness. It's just the same as if we wanna become great musicians, great athletes, or great at anything else. There has to be parameters set for those if we wanna be great at those things, and chastity is no different. And I'm saying all of this in Bush Gardens in front of all of these people because it's a great and tangible reminder for me to know that chastity requires boldness. Talking about it, living it out requires boldness. And so that's that invitation for all of you to live this out in boldness and to not be afraid or ashamed that this is something you wanna take up for yourself because you are worth it and chastity is worth it. So when chastity is seen for what it really is, it enriches and strengthens our desires. It doesn't suppress or take them away. Take my word for it as a Culture Project missionary and as missionaries in the Culture Project who strive for chastity every single day. It's something that's fulfilling, something that's enriching, and something that brings about human flourishing, and it can be yours. So maybe something you guys can do to implement chastity into your life is maybe if you see someone that you're attracted to, don't deny it and don't shove it away, but rejoice in it, offer up a prayer of gratitude. But at the same time, if it's not your gift to have, let it go and move on and thank God for that gift that he put in your life momentarily. That is one way we can start implementing our desires in a way where we can become gifts for other people and start becoming who we're meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean like that's it, as in like that's it. Yeah, I know it really does. I look like a bishop, but like with eyeballs on my head. Thank you guys for checking out that video. Be sure to subscribe to The Culture Project, right? I don't know where to subscribe. <laughs> Be sure to check out more of our videos right here. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.